All right, welcome back to another installment of Julian's Random Projects. I've got Ellie out here helping today. What are you doing, Ellie? I'm just getting some parts that were stuck in the car. I got a net and some washers. Nice. All right, good job. Keep it up. All right, development. Slight milestone. So the way the way that we talk to this inverter is over serial and can and serial for setting up the different um, parameters and stuff and that's exactly what's been wrong with this I've uh, hit a bit of a roadblock this uh, 96 volts guy commented in the forums and he described the exact same problem I'm experiencing and of course I, I didn't write in the forums earlier because I was trying to figure it out myself and read through the documentation uh, and, and see if see if I can get any further and the uh, the support is is minimal here it, these are these are parts that were acquired through an acquisition and so it's it's not I, I think it's a bit much for me to ask for these folks to hold my hand entirely so I was trying to figure it out on my own uh, and I also had a backup plan which was to buy a Scott's drive inverter if if I couldn't get this thing working, but uh, so in, in here he describes the exact same problem, uh, problem I'm having, where he's got a, a critical fault that's thrown, and th when things like that happen from the inverter, uh, from the DMOC, then the JevQ says, "Oh, I, I see a failure, so I'll, I'll refuse to send CAN messages to the inverter, messages like drive or apply this much torque to the motor, that type of stuff." And that's good. That's a good thing because uh, this, the DMOC could be in a funky state where the the relays are set or uh, in a way that's not conducive to driving. So that's a good thing, Colin replies and says that he's, he's worked with 96 volts like sort of offline and he's saying that uh, some of the air-cooled DMOX that uh, that left EVTV didn't get set with the appropriate uh, EEPROM settings, these parameters, uh, to work with the JevQ. And luckily, it gives us the exact settings that it needs to be, and then goes a step further and gives us the file so that if we want, if we don't sit here and type these things in and, and introduce some uh, some human error, we can just drag and drop the files over, and that's exactly what I did. All right, so we've got 200 some odd volts coming out of the uh, Chevy Volt Pack. So first, let's make with the pre-charge resistor. All right, so now I've got high voltage connected, and then the dev queue, and then the DMOC. There we go. Can I come over there, Dad? Sure. Uh, well, actually, you need to stay. You don't go past this part right here. Remember the so the orange stuff? Oh yeah. Yeah. Over here. Uh, yeah, as long as you take us a couple steps back. Perfect. All right, so now let's, I'm gonna set you guys up over here, right in there, so they can see the shaft if it starts to spin. You ready? You're not really setting them up. Just the phone no. up. Yeah, but it's a fig. It's a figure of speech. I'm saying I'm setting yeah. them up over here. Yeah. Later in the future, they'll feel like they got set up there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like they can see it from mm -hmm. up there. Are you ready? Are you going to watch inside there and tell me if, it's, if it spins? Mm -hmm. It's not really spinning. You're right, it's not. It's spinning a little it's bit. It's spinning a little bit? All right, here uh -huh. we go. Check it out. Ready? It was spinning. Can can you... hold still. It was. <gasps> it's spinning! It's spinning! <laughs> can I try? Oh. Uh, on the pedal over here? No, you gotta do it gently. You can try it when we get it in the car, okay? Okay. Right. Is this gonna make it go? Oh, yeah. The wheels go? Yep. Is this the end of it? When we put the motor inside, hey, is that gonna be all the end? Almost. Um, oh, yeah. wait, the car hurts. That thing that goes over it. Over what? The yeah, the hood. Yeah, yeah, it's in the backyard. But can we still do the hood? Yeah, we'll do the hood after we get the engine, or after we get the motor in. Yes! Alright, come and on then now. We can, then we'll be all done. We just need to clean it. Yep. So for these, so for these transmission mounts, it's basically out with the old and in with the new. Uh, and it's times like these that I really wish I had some sort of a sandblaster or something to knock all this crud out of here uh, but it's one of these pieces that's going to be up underneath the uh, the undercarriage of the car no one's really going to see this this isn't like an, an award-winning show car or something like that so i'm just going to kind of knock off the big chunks here and uh, put it back in more of a serviceability kind of clean but not a eat your lunch off of it kind of clean you guys ever watch those uh, british car building shows like uh, wheeler dealer and, and, and the like have you ever noticed that when they 
when they put a part back, they refer to it as offering up the part, like offering it up to the car. I quite like that. It, it's it's definitely more akin to what's happening here. I mean, like you're trying to make all these bits fit. Uh, you got nice new rubber and uh you know this isn't like a tight tolerance necessarily but you really are just saying like if it pleases the mg midget transmission i offer this part up and hopefully it fits all right so we're trying to shove this thing in here and we need every inch we can get uh so we're gonna try and remove this bumper there we go you got it that bought us like another, uh, I don't know, four inches. <laughs> it might be all she needs. We're, we're leaving these bolts in here because as long as they're proud of this water intake and outlet, then when we're sitting here, you know, shoving this uh, square peg into a round hole, then if it hits something, it'll hit this before it hits uh, the, the piece we care about. Uh, these can be sacrificial, meaning we can like replace them if they get all dinged up. So right. the often overlooked step of aligning that shaft down there oh there you go perfect see that shaft there needs to go on that spline bit on the left it's also a good vantage point of all the twigs and berries and things that got flicked up <laughs> from the road over all these years uh, i'm sure there's like some archaeological value to those but um that's for somebody else we have the pleasure of trying to stick our hands in there while also balancing half a ton of weight <laughs> <laughs> ready to crush your hands at a moment's notice and definitely give you the giggles all right let's you guys get the idea it's gonna be hard to record that and do it at the same time so just imagine that shaft going on that other shaft yeah all right so we got really close <laughs> uh on well it's kind of hard to see there this hole on the back side that's the mount for the transmission and just to the left of it here is the hole that's supposed to go and you know a line up here and you throw a bolt in you're done uh we haven't gotten that far and the reason we haven't gotten that far is because if you come around here we are smashing the transmission up against the the body or the the frame of the car here uh and let me see like light oh yeah oh that's some good camera work buddy all right uh, you can see that we are smashing up against the same spot that uh, previous uh, shade tree mechanics have smashed up against with that bell housing there for the uh, transmission. Um, those That shape is not our doing. You can see it has that patina from 1983 on it. Uh, but we're, we're definitely utilizing all that space. And so, and you can see the only way we can come forward more is if we clear this frame on on the midget there it is so like we're we're right in the home stretch like if this could go forward that amount of distance it would drop down uh and this the motor would be in uh but it's not so i think the easiest fix is going to be to remove this heater core cut uh cut away some of the car you know just or maybe bash it in some more um and cut like a little u-shape here and then it would slide right in and uh it's looking like those bolt holes on this side are going to line up with that frame almost like this motor was born for it uh, and that'll give us a nice little mounting spot there and then we can fabric cobble something to go from here to here and yeah then we'll be done all right that's pretty good progress that's a milestone right we should leave it there pretty good as in like in this video that's what i'm trying to say like yeah. motor is spinning and now motor is in car mm -hmm. not in its final resting place but very near uh, <laughs> you can taste it. You can taste it. All right. All right. Thanks for following along, guys. I'm hanging in. There ain't no doubt. And I'm hanging tough. Over and out. Over and out.